little bit about uh, Christian Blue. Sarah Leone uh, was the founder of the, of the 98 Christian Blue. 1996. She's the one who's been greeting everyone at the door. Let's give Sarah a hand. Continues, continues, continues. Uh, she's very uh, diligent, so we're very happy to be working with Sarah. She started the Christian Coalition in 1996. I think it was a meeting in Orlando with you know, Pat Roberts and Brown Reed. And so she was running it for quite a while and, and very successful. And then uh, the group changed, someone else took over, and then that, that chapter died for, for bad management. And so in 2004, Sarah asked me, I had no idea what was going on, but just to get involved, and we met at um, Kenny Gale Mace's house for some meetings, and we met some other people there, and we just tried to help in 2004 the election. I didn't know we were going to be part of Christian Coalition that time. And um, at that meeting, we met uh, Dave and uh, Dina Zachary, who, uh, Dave was very passionate about uh, having a Christian's influence in our country. And, um, and we were we, we had some goals. We were trying to get involved in different things inside in the elections. And, and Dave, uh, he, he helped set up a board of the Christian Coalition. And Bob Rosasco, is someone he recruited, Bob Rosasco here, who just spoke a minute ago, was the founder of Habitat for Humanity here in Miami, Florida. He was head of the Republican Party. He was the co of the Ravens campaign. Uh, we were, I had no idea who he was until later I found out more about him. And he's. Uh, very helpful, and then as he mentioned, we helped him fight. But anyway, we were at the, at the meeting, and Dave and Dina, Dave eventually got on the, on the board. He basically put all this time in helping the Christian coalition. He said one time, Doug, we have to fight the gamble. We have to stop slots. And Bob and I, and Sarah, we were thinking, oh boy, what is this? What is this? And so he was so persistent that we had to stop slots, and Dave told me that he, he convinced us. And so, with a, just a couple of weeks left, Sarah sent a letter to Jeff, Governor Bush, then Governor, and said, where do you stand on the gambling issue? And so then, a two-page letter came back to us um, from the Governor's office, blasting what gambling would do in Florida, based on studies showing that it would be a net loss of about $2 billion in the state of Florida, if we allowed it. <clears throat> um, and so, uh, basically, we took that, Sarah sent it to the Herald, and a few days later that was in the uh, business section or some section of the Herald, and then Robert, Marco Rubio came out against slots. At that time, there was nobody going against the slots in the city. Jeb Bush, the letter he sent came in, then Marco Rubio was quoted in the paper being against slot machines in, in, uh, in Florida. And then uh, Sarah sent an email to a, a businessman here, he, he sent us $20,000, and Bob helped out. We raised about $70,000. We had an advertising agency in Michigan with just a few days left. Uh, we got collected money. At any rate, what happened? I think you know the story, sort of. But, but um, we got a call from uh, the newspaper, the Herald, uh, the day after the election. And they said, well, congratulations. Well, we were watching TV. I said, what do you mean? It was on the internet. You guys won. You know, we stopped the slot. It's just a very small budget. And we said, what do you... What do you think about that? I said, well, it's like, uh, I said, it's like David and Goliath. And so uh, it came out the next day, um, and uh, they quoted me and saying it's like David and Goliath. And if you read further in a different article, Judd Bush was quoted saying it's like David and Goliath. And we can talk about it. <laughs> and I don't, I'm not comparing myself, but it's interesting to talk about you know, and I remember we had the guy from, uh, from Florida, uh, where's he from? Uh, he's one for CFO, he came from our meetings. Yeah. Johnson. Johnson, Gary. Yeah, he, yeah. he really challenged us that we could make it. And because of that victory, the Christian Coalition of the State of Florida gave an award to Dave Zachary. Uh, he, shortly after, just within a year or two, went to be with the Lord, and uh, so we missed him. And his wife continued on with the Christian Coalition as a treasurer after she, she went through some grieving process. And then uh, uh, she just recently went to the Lord also. And uh, Sarah, Sarah had told me, Doug, you know, go see her in the hospital. And Sarah is involved with uh, soul winning one-to-one at, at Wayside Baptist. And she really has a part to help people know for sure going to heaven. And it's a free gift from God and Christ. 
Okay, trust me on that. And so Sarah wanted to, you know, to make sure that people know that. She's working on that also. So anyway, I kind of, not to go too long here, but just to share that uh, uh, what we're looking forward to doing, this uh, working with Bob and Napa Pack, it's good to be united. And Brett Dodds is here, and other people here in this meeting, and Lourdes, and uh, just to work together. That what, if you don't know, that 50% of the those who go to church are not registered to vote. That was part of research. 50%. So now you've got half of those going to church not making an impact in their voting. Now that's an opportunity. It sounds like an opportunity, doesn't it? Well, I guess the other statistic is, of those who are registered, 50% vote. You do the math, I'll help you. 50% of 50% is 25%. You have one out of four church doors who are impacting the elections. So one of our projects that Bob and and some of us were working on with that together that pack is to, to influence getting the church to help them to get registered to vote. That's the first step. And then secondly, help them get informed on where candidates really stand on the issues, hopefully, through the voter guides. And then also help them to get out to vote. A huge, huge project. To, but can you imagine if you could quadruple the impact of church goers in every election from a quarter to, a, I mean, if you just doubled if you could double the impact, as you see, because we, uh, as Christians, sometimes it's a comfortable lifestyle, we need to get motivated. In the Supreme Court, they had four hour, the Supreme Court, four hour communion sessions. Communion, you know what communion is? It's when you remember Christ dying for us, and, and take the blood and the, and the, the bread. Four hour communion in the Supreme Court. They also said that they would not let juries deliberate until a minister came and prayed over them. So, at any rate, what, what Mike was saying earlier, that the Supreme Court, for some reason, has a bigger role than it used to. Uh, anyway, so we, this is by getting involved, helping with these organizations, that Christian Coalition, and we also have some Tea Party representatives here, 9, 12, we're just trying to work together to have an influence. Let me just close, if I can, just, just that Mike had shared, and I think also a pastor stalker. Religion and politics, do they really mix? Is it really okay to, to do that as a Christian? Okay, so what you have is you have God talking to Moses. I want you to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Moses would have said, well, Lord, that's not really the, uh, we don't mix spirituality with, with God. I, I can't really be spiritual and go to politics or go to what you go to the Pharaoh because that, that, that doesn't mix. I just worship you and I read the Bible, I read your word, I'll, I'll listen to the Ten Commandments, but to go to Pharaoh, that's not that's kind of political. So let Aaron do it. So so what happened to Moses? Well, he didn't want to do it anyway. Um, so of course God's involved. Why? Because he cares for people. And he says, pray for your leaders in First, in, uh, first Timothy so that you will have a tranquil life and live your life in dignity. We pray for leaders for our sake, not for their sake. They're servants, as someone said earlier. I'm a servant. She's someone's a public servant. And um, so uh, the other one is, is Joseph. So Joseph was offered the number two position in the world, in, in Egypt. And he could have said, well, you know, I worship God. Let me pray. That's fine. I interpret your dreams. But I don't think I want anything to do with power. I don't want anything to do with ruling or helping helping you uh, save the rest of the world from starvation in seven years. I want to have nothing to do with that. Is that what Joseph said? Or did Joseph see a, a potential opportunity to use the God-given abilities that he has, he's been given and the opportunities to make a difference for the people in the world. That's what Joseph did, Moses, but they didn't. They didn't know it was going to happen. So all of us here, we all have a value, an eternal intrinsic value, because you've been created in the image of God to make a difference in our world. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Raise the roof. Ah, 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 